Uh, another thing I watched uh, uh, over the weekend is all of season six of uh, A and W American Ninja Warrior. I've we, I've seen some of the episodes, but yeah, I just wanted to rewatch them. So what do you think about season six of American Ninja Warrior? Yeah, I really like the season. Um, you know, obviously you know, you get these you know new stories, new competitors that grow on to be, you know, really popular, um, again, some shocking falls with, you know, Drew and Flip and, um, Mike, Mike Bernardo, you also get huge, you know, milestones for female competitors, and with Casey Cansaro, Michelle Warnke, and Meg Martin, and I think the biggest thing that I could take away from season six is seeing where, you know, some of these, you know, competitors are in season six, and seeing where they are in seasons and now, like when, like for example, Ethan Swanson was a good example of this. Where you see him in St. Louis, and he makes he makes a slight mistake on, you know, the rolling log, and he, you know he's not a, he doesn't do the swan. He's he's you know he's, he's very much a happy to be there. He's he's just another average you know competitor to see that he grew and to be one of the very best. You know, it's it's that kind of thing that that kind of shocks you. It's like someone who, at this stage, you realize he's so good now. But you, it's it's interesting when you take a step back, when you watch a ninja's rise to fame backwards, where you see the fame side of it, but you don't see how he started. And, that's a shame. And again, I like all the obstacles. Um, again, most of the courses that are somewhat formulaic. You got the, you got the quintuple steps. Obviously, that doesn't change. But the second obstacle is always the this the uh, a slider, you know, obstacle a slider into something, or, or not necessarily a slider, but something that goes on a goes down a track, you know, except uh the cat grab and uh. Denver. Um, so yeah, I think, um, again, stage one, extremely difficult, 18 finishers, stage two, you know, two finishers, and then no finishers in stage three, very similar to season eight, and I think overall, the season's pretty similar to season eight, you know, because it's like season eight was a pretty by-the-books kind of season, you know, I feel like. In which, yeah, this kind of felt out. You know, you got the, you got the, you know, medium range, somewhat easy qualifying. I think that's the, the thing. It's like, the qualifying courses aren't that hard, but that's fine. You know, the finals courses are kind of, kind of right where you want it to be. A little bit easy on the easy side, but not too easy where it's like you're going to get 20, 30 finishes like you would in a qualifying course. Um, uh, I think another thing I realized this season, watching season six, is seeing how many ninjas couldn't get up the warp wall. Cause it's crazy. Cause now, when you, once someone gets to the fifth obstacle, as long as they don't go for the mega wall, you just assume, oh, they're getting up the warp wall. But now, when I watch season six, I genuinely like, can this ninja get up the fourteen foot warp wall? Like they didn't even raise it to fourteen and a half. But yeah, that that comes in season eight again. Season eight. Um, and I guess it's just, like, just in general, seeing some of your favorite ninjas, again, in an earlier stage of their ninja career, I just think is fascinating. And that's another fascinating thing, same thing is we talked about how Ethan Swanson, how he wasn't that, f- same thing with, like, uh, anyways, sorry, I'm getting off track, but, same, same thing with, like, um, a, uh, what's his face? Uh, uh, what's his face? Can I? Oh yeah. Um. Same thing. It's like the same thing with Carson Will. So Carson again wasn't that good. Um. This season, it's season six. You know, wasn't that well known. And then now look at how well known he got the mega wall. Oh, that's that's another fun, fascinating thing. Yeah, he got the mega wall in season eleven. But this season, it took him like two tries to get up the warp wall, the fourteen foot warp wall. And you just saw him scale, you know, a mega warp wall which is fourteen feet higher than that. So that's kind of fascinating. But also it's in reverse. You know, 
seeing kind of some of these ninja superstars here who are ninja superstars now. But maybe they were now. You know, maybe then they were, you know, the big thing. And now maybe they aren't. Ninjas like Brent Stevens and you don't really see anymore. You know, yeah, yeah, he still competes, but, you know, he's not, they're not one of those main focuses that, you know, they like to focus on. And same thing with Brian Arnold. I mean, Brian Arnold didn't even compete in season 11. And in season 10, all of his runs were shot, were uh, either fast forward, and his last two runs were cut completely. They were, had those, like, um, those, um, do you remember those, um, runs where, like, during this commercial, we'll show you this run. Yeah, that, that's what happened to him. But when it's on demand, once once it's on demand, you can't see his runs. So, and then season eleven, he didn't even compete. So it's like, it's funny. It's just like season six, the pretty much the king of ninja is no nowhere to be seen. You know, six seasons later, five seasons later. So I think that's fascinating. So yeah. I really like the season. Um, right now, I'm currently re-binging season seven. So yeah, need something to do during this now 21-day break. So yeah, stay tuned for more videos coming out.